on Hotspot. Australian Sports Commission was in the country to run an inclusive sports training program to support sports ministries and national sports federations to create inclusive sports environments for persons with disabilities. In soccer, the PNG Football Association announces the women's soccer team for the Pacific Games. And we preview round 15 of the Telecom National Soccer League. And as always, we wrap up the show with our weekend draws. Good evening and thank you for joining me tonight on Hotspot. We head straight into our first story for tonight with round 8 of the Port Mosby Corporate Snooker Competition this week. Round 8 of the Port Moresby Snooker Competition, the race for the title is heating up. Lamana 2 have stayed clear in the A grade division with 27 points. Six teams have registered for the A and C grade division respectively, and eight teams for the B grade division. In the corporate comp we've got three divisions, we've got A grade, B grade and C grade. And um, in the A grade, we have actually have six teams. We have uh, Lamana 2. We have two teams sponsored by Lamana, Lamana 1 and Lamana 2. We have one team sponsored by uh, Grant Agencies Limited, the uh, Gale Top Shooters. Um, Dragons uh, have two teams. They have the Dragons 1 and Dragons Originals, both sponsored by Starland and Laguna. And then we have um, Pacific Bomana Bullets, which is um, uh, sponsored by Pacific MMI and I think they have a couple of other um, uh, uh, smaller sponsors that I can't think of at the moment. But out of those six teams at the moment, the Mana 2 uh, is leading the way with eight wins and no losses, so they're doing very well and they're on 27 points, followed by uh, Gal Top Shooters with five wins and three losses on 18 points, and uh, Dragons 1 on, also on five losses, but with a not as good for and against as uh, Gal Top Shooters rounding out the top three on 18 points. In the A-grade challenge, defending champions Lamana 2 went down to Stalin Laguna Dragons Originals 5 points to 2. The sport is slowly gaining popularity in the nation's capital with the emergence of young talents such as Miria David the 2014 runoff in the Port Mosby Handicap Challenge from Lamana 2. Despite going down two frames to one against Dragons, Roger Engie on Table 1, 2015 Port Mosby Snooker Open Titles Champion Ralph Kainer's recent success was no easy win in the sport of snooker. It's been, it's been tough playing snooker, um, especially when you haven't won any titles and you, you try very hard, but now that I've realized that you don't have to try very hard to win a game win a big competition. It's all about being in control, you know, having, well, concentrating hard and, you know, staying focused. Uh, if you try too hard, you, you go overboard. Lamana's Q Club becomes the third venue to host the snooker and pool competition in Port Mosby. Round 9 is held for next week with Lamana 2, Pacific MMI Bullets 2 and Lamana Hotel Famagusta currently sitting at the top of the table in the respective A, B and C grade divisions. We wish all the players the best for the rest of the season. We head out for a quick break. Stay with us with more on Hotspot. If 
you've just joined us, you're watching Hotspot. Lorraine joins us tonight with the Australian Sports Commission that were in the country to run an inclusive training program to support the sports federations to create inclusive sports environment for persons with disabilities. with disabilities in this country definitely these kinds of training. It has to happen not only in Port Mosby, but it must be happening right across the country. It's really a challenge. In fact, uh, we've got a lot of people who are trying to and have been uh, on the path of getting involved in, in activities in society. The need for the development of sports amongst persons with special needs is becoming a growing concern in Papua New Guinea. Benson Tegia, National Treasurer of the PNG Assembly of Persons with Special Needs, says sports can be used as a vital tool for empowerment to boost the morale of the wider population and encourage them to become more involved in society. It has happened. Uh such that a lot of people with disabilities are really missing out on that uh, uh, in, the, in the sporting sector, if you like. And, uh, and simply because opportunities are not given. Um, I think the experiences are that uh, there is the demand out there, which is people with disabilities really uh, want to be part of what goes in society. Uh, but I think the way uh, is not been provided, and I think the opportunities are not given, like I said. And uh, the honest now is today, as I speak, as the uh, national treasurer for the, the, the umbrella organization of persons with disabilities in the country, we call ourselves the PNG Assembly of Disabled Persons. And uh, we would like to do our bit by engaging governments uh, because. As I speak, next month we will be launching the National Disability Policy. David Cuppy's story preaches the importance of sports for persons with special needs. There are some good opportunities, like if they participate in sports, you know, uh, through sports, you know, they can, uh, some of them can you know, uh, get the recognition uh, to be, like to get scholarships to study or to work in some. Uh, organizations that uh, normally support, you know, disability, have recognition for disability, you know. We have, some, we have had some people in the past where through sports, like, uh, they got some employment, you know, some through sports, they got some scholarships to study in certain institutions, yeah. Fifteen years on, David says one of the toughest challenges yet is being accepted into society. Once an able athlete, now a wheelchair user. What gives him hope is the opportunity to shine, excel and be an active member of the community through sports. Benson's story is no different. That you are not alone, you are not alone. Uh, the feeling of trying to get out into the open has been a challenge for me. Uh, since I've acquired my disability, it took me 
a lot of time to actually get out into society. And I did, and it worked very well. And my challenge for them is that we, you consider yourself a person with disabilities, you have a huge pack of abilities in you. And it is about the abilities that we want to put to show and show our society, you know, our people in government, people across all lines of, uh, of, of life, that um, we want uh, persons with disabilities to be really impacting on their life in terms of what they can do uh, to utilize the abilities that are there. Both Benson and David are all part of a movement to expand sports to the doorsteps of persons with special needs. David says very little attention has been given to the many people who live with visual and hearing impairments as well as physical disabilities and they are pushing for change. We still haven't organized ourselves properly so uh, but uh, we, we have plans to, uh, to to start up some uh, competitions in, in the city and then uh, throughout the, the country so uh, that's in our plan. Yeah, I'm actually I got a scholarship from uh, outside to study in Canberra, so I'll be leaving for Canberra hopefully next month. We head out for another break. Up next, the announcement of the women's soccer team for the Pacific Games. Welcome back to Hotspot. Before we take a look at what's coming up on another round of the Telcom NSL, PNG Football Association announced their final squad for our women's team this week. Let's take a look. Despite being defeated in their first friendly against the Thailand national team, coach Philip Gary is looking forward to the team to even the odds and get their preparations off to a start on a high. The team will be boosted with some fresh talent, including two offshore-based players, Abigail Mead and Lucy Minor. Coach Gary said the team has a good balance in pace and power, experience and enthusiasm, but challenging teams in the likes of New Zealand and others who are of world standard, the team will need to have better ball possession to compete against quality teams. The national women's football team will look to build the foundation in the team's campaign to qualify for the 2016 Rio Olympics. The team will be led by the experiences of Deslin Sinu and Doka Sesevo, and with the inclusion of Sandra Birum and Yvonne Gabong, who missed out in the first friendly. The squad will leave on the 16th of May for Thailand and will return back on the 2nd of June. And we wish the PNG women's soccer team the best in their preparations for the Pacific Games. Another important announcement made just yesterday was the agreement signed between Telecom OFC and MTV to broadcast football matches here in the country. The agreement will see MTV broadcast a range of competitions which include the A-League, OFC matches and the National Soccer League. The Chief Executive Officer of Media New Guinea Limited, Mr. Banu Sud, said MTV will be broadcasting through five platforms. Now that comes in MTV Online, MTV Mobile, Analog Television and Digital Television by 2016 and of course FM100 will be broadcasting through their radio network. MTV Mobile and um, MTV Digital TV that we are going to start on generally next year. So it's purely on our network uh, at this stage of exclusivity. FM100, as a subsidiary of Telecom PNG, will be broadcasting all matches live on radio to reach the wider population of Papua New Guinea. Which this agreement brings to Papua New Guinea 
is very, very important. So through FM100, through EMTV, the maximum number of people in Papua New Guinea, from the farthest reaches of the country to Port Moresby, get access to these top line matches. And that is a precursor for the further development of the game. It's very important, which is why we think this partnership is so exciting for us and for the sport in, um, in Papua New Guinea. <coughs> The maximum coverage that both media outlets will provide will assist with the popularization of the sport, one of the OFC's visions. In order to popularize the sports, we need to put uh, footballs in, te in TV, televisions through all sorts of means. So I, I appreciate uh, EMTV and with telecoms for taking that initiative. Especially is a, a very good win for public English football, especially in this region and also uh, for Oceania which we, we are very keen to develop the game and popularize the sports. Mr Chung also said there were further discussions in place regarding the broadcasting rights for all FIFA matches this year and in the coming years. Now we can expect a few big announcements to come in the coming weeks. We'll also be helping uh, uh, EMTV uh, for, uh, to push for FIFA to give uh, uh, preference for coverage to uh, EMTV through my recommendations. Hopefully the EMTV can have all the FIFA to win all the FIFA rights and cover all the, all the FIFA events in, the, in these countries. So that's part of our initiative as uh, Oceania Football Confederation and as a head of PNG Football. I think it's my, part of my role to make sure that you know, football is develops and that EMTV gets uh, benefits from, uh, for helping and promoting our sports in this initiative. This year, the OFC Champions League in March kick-started the OFC calendar for 2015. After the Pacific Games, the OFC President's Cup will take place in August and will then lead into the Under-20 Women's Championships. Chung says in the interest of developing the code, he will push for Port Moresby to host more international matches in the future. When I say international game, it's more to do with our national teams. I'm going to try to, to negotiate with teams or try to organize a few nations or one-off nations or two, two countries tournaments. It depends on how I negotiate. To come to Papua New Guinea because we have the facilities now that we can use. You know, and not only that we're making use of the facilities, but we are also uh, bringing more exposure for our na national teams because our national team needs a lot of, of matches, you know, a lot of matches to, to play. And we're also preparing for the uh, nation cups which starts next year, so start next year, and, uh, and also the World Cup. This weekend in the Telcom National Soccer League will feature Admiralty meeting Medang at 11 a.m. in the first doubleheader in Port Moresby. While FC Port Moresby will test themselves against league champions Hikari. Stay with us as we wrap up the show with our weekend draws. <laughs> We've come to the end of the show. Make sure to tune in on Monday night at 9 p.m. to catch all your sports results with Jeremy and Dion on Sports Scene and join Lauren for all your Pacific Games update on Road to Port Moresby 2015. Now let's take a look at what's coming up this weekend on our Weekend Draws. <laughs> On our weekend draws in Port Moresby, the Port Moresby Easy Loan AFL Premiership is underway this weekend at the University of Papua New Guinea. In the women's division, the Mana Dockers take on Gordon's Cockafuzz at 9am. At 10am in the first men's reserve match, Concept Company will go up against Defence Hawks. 
And in the senior men's division, Moniplus Tarama Suns will take on Lamana Dockers at 4 p.m. Then on Sunday, Gulf Giants will go head to head against last year's grand finalist Tarama Suns at 10 a.m. And to wrap up round one, University Tigers will take on Gordon's Fokopas at 3.30 p.m. The secondary school's AFL competition also commences this Saturday at the Tarama Barracks AFL Oval. Don Bosco Technical School will take on Kila Kila Secondary School at 8 a.m. to kickstart the matches in the under-17 boys division. And over to Rugby League, the 2015 Digicel Cup enters round four this Sunday. Over at the Rabi Amul Oval, Hagen Eagles will take on Simbu Lions. Hella Wigman will take on Mendy Burks in Mendy. Goro Kalahanis will be vying for a win on home soil when they take on Gulf in Sapayas. And it's said to be a fest of rugby at the Calabon Oval in Kokopo when the Gurias take on Port Mosby Vipers at 12.30pm. Followed by Round 9 of the Intra Super Cup when the SPPG Hunters face Northern Pride at 2.30pm. The Port Mosby Rugby League also enters another round of matches this weekend at Murray Barracks with the Women's Division to enter Round 2. And to wrap up our weekend draws in Rugby Union, the Capital Rugby Union 7th Challenge enters Round 2 this Saturday at Tarama Bark. The Ralum Club in Kokopo will also host the annual Eggmark Gurias Players Auction tomorrow night at 7pm. All business houses and individuals are invited to attend. A reminder that if you'd like us to feature you on Hotspot or have us train with you on our special segment, Get Involved, Please shoot us an email at sports at entv.com.pg or check us out on Facebook. And if you're in Port Moresby, drop by to Second Floor Garden City and ask for our awesome sports team and we'll be more than happy to assist you. Until next week, play hard, play safe and we'll catch you right here on Hotspot.